Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to my channel. I think last tutorial was based on uh, uh, how to actually see the composition of square wave in a form of a sinusoidal signal and how does my uh, book signal looks like it in reality using the radio companion. So today we're going to look at sampling. So sampling flow graph is quite easy. Uh, there is nothing special going on here. I have a signal source that has a fundamental frequency of 1 kilohertz. I have set my sample rate to 32 kilohertz. Uh, this is just a variable to, so I can change the frequency during runtime using a QT uh, GUI range uh, range block. And um, that's it. Uh, that's it. That's it in terms of signal source. Then I have a throttle block since I'm only running the simulation. So I only need throttle block. Then I have my time sync. And then my have frequency sync, nothing is special, everything is set as is. But I have set my frequency, uh, bandwidth frequency up to sample rate, which is actually 32 kilohertz. All right. Uh, so I would see uh, 32 kilohertz of signal in, uh, in my bandwidth. Bandwidth would be around 32 kilohertz of my signal. All right. The next thing that I'm using is actually a GUI chooser block. This block, what it does, it has a default frequency of 32, uh, default value of 32 kilo samples. Then I have another option, which is for zero samples. Basically, I'm setting up my frequency sample, sampling frequency at 24 kilohertz, 34 kilo, 32 kilohertz, 48 kilohertz, and 64 kilohertz. These I'm using as a combo box. In these combo box, I would show you in when I run this particular flow graph. All right. So this is what it is, and I'm using a tab widget. This widget allows me to show both time and uh, frequency signal, but in form of a in, in in terms of a tab. So I need to click on a tab for frequency sync. For time sync, I need to click on a tab. That's it. So let's let's look at it. So my sample rate is 32, and my fundamental frequency is 1k. So Nyquist criteria says this. Your, if you, your sampling frequency should be at least greater than or equal to your fundamental frequency. Your fundamental frequency is the frequency that you want to sample. Sampling is the first step when you're performing analog to digital conversion. Uh, you take your analog signal and you take samples. The more samples you will take, the better your signal is going to be. All right? And the less the error is going to be. The more samples is good the more the, uh, the higher the sampling frequency is going to be the reconstruction of your analog signal is going to be much easier that's what it means so let's run this flow graph and let's quickly look at uh, how does this flow graph look like how does this particular output look like uh, using that uh, tab widget i'm seeing my time domain signal and my frequency domain signal using that uh, choose uh, chooser widget uh, I'm seeing my sample rate, so I can choose different sample rates if I want. I can choose 24 kilo samples, 32, 48, and 64. This is a range widget I'm using, uh, just so I can vary the frequency, so I can see uh, uh, by changing the frequency and keeping the sample rate same, what will happen. I want to show you two things. What will happen when you undersample a signal, What will have, and how, what, how does an aliasing look like? Uh, aliasing is a concept that uh, there's a signal that you want to sample it should be sampled to a particular frequency but it's showing me a totally different frequency that's what it means all right so let's let's look at it uh, so right now we're all good uh, we have a sample rate of 32 kilo so let's the, leave these samples as is let's look at a frequency domain signal my frequency domain signal is beautiful uh, this is at about one kilo so let's start increasing the frequency I start increasing the frequency and let's see what happens. Let's say I start seeing the frequency and let's see the behavior in time domain and frequency domain. So right now I'm at one kilo. So let's change this quickly to three kilo. All right, nothing, uh, nothing is changing, but uh, instead of having a constant amplitude, it almost looks like a constant amplitude. I can just simply press my right click button and then draw an area so I can see all right everything looks good but I can see something that is going out of shape in terms of an amplitude but most of most of it is exactly the same so we're good uh, at three kilohertz uh, so let's increase this frequency to about uh, let's do about seven kilohertz all right let's do seven thousand uh, sorry seven uh, sorry 
7,000. So let's do 7,000. All right, now let's look at my signal. It's no more frequency is looking exactly the same when it's repeating itself, but the shape is kind of out of shape. The signal is kind of out of shape. All right, so let's look at this same signal. So I have a fundamental frequency of 7 kilohertz. I have a sampling frequency of 32,000 or 32,000 kilo samples. And so let's look at my frequency domain box. Everything looks good. I am seeing a 7 kilohertz of signal, which is good. So Nyquist criteria says that it has to be minimum of two times. That's the minimum criteria, at least two times or more than two times. Uh, my sampling frequency should be. So frequency is looking good. It's still at 7 kilohertz. You can clearly see uh, as per my marker. Now let's go back to time domain. Even though my signal is changing a little bit, it's no more a pure sinusoidal signal. All right, now let's increase this frequency to let's say 12 kilohertz. Or oh, let's do it like, uh, let's do around uh, 15 kilohertz. Let's see what happens. 15,000. All right, now it's, it has like changed. Uh, now the amplitude, it looks like amplitude modulated signal. When I increase my frequency to 15 kilohertz and my frequency domain is actually showing me what? Let's look at it. All right, it is actually showing me 15 kilohertz. Now let's increase this frequency a little bit more. Let's, let's go beyond that. So this is actually meeting a minimum criteria. Let's go about 17 kilohertz. Let's see what do I see. At 17,000 kilohertz, look at my time domain signal. It still looks like a weird signal, but let's see what are the frequency components which are present in this. So when I look at my frequency domain signal, it's no more at 17 kilohertz. Now aliasing start taking place because the minimum criteria has to be 32, 34,000. Because if I have two, if I'm selecting a frequency of 17,000, the minimum criteria according to Nyquist, it has to be 34,000 samples. But since my sample rate is 32,000, I won't be able to visualize the signal. So I'm seeing the alias of that signal at 15 kilohertz. I'm not actually seeing the real signal. That's what happened when aliasing occurs. You won't, in time domain, you can see the change in amplitude. Yes, there is a change in amplitude. It looks like an amplitude modulated signal, but in frequency domain, you can clearly see that this is an alias of that actual signal, which was actually 17,000 uh, 17, kilohertz because not meeting that minimum criteria. Now, when I change the sample, to 48,000. Now that has changed now. Now this is at about 17 kilohertz. So by changing the different sample rate, and uh, I can clearly see uh, the concept of aliasing and what is the concept related to the criteria which is associated with Nyquist. Uh, definitely in time domain, I can see the change. So uh, in terms of how does my signal looks like, because still at seven, I'm giving a pure sinus or cosinusoidal signal. I'm using sinusoid and cosinusoid interchangeably, which means exactly the same thing for the purpose of our video. So, so that's it. So I can clearly see my signal in terms of an amplitude does not look like an actual signal, which was a pure cosinusoidal wave but the frequency component is still there. So the rule of thumb is this, when you're sampling your signal, yes, Nyquist criteria is there, but that's the minimum, minimum criteria. If you want a proper recovery of your signal, you got to sample at least nine to 10 times of your fundamental frequency, at least nine to 10 times of your fundamental frequency. If you want to recover every single component, which were or which was present, in your uh, fundamental uh, frequency. So I hope you'd like this small tutorial on sampling. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.